Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're using lots of stencils. The Birch Tree stencils, Hello Fall, this is the Snowfall, and then this is the Waves. Um, I'm also using very large sentiments here. It's the Big Time Kindness, Bitty Buzzwords, and something else. Uh, these are other ones that I had pulled out, the polka dots and the balloons, that would also work for this technique, but I didn't use them. So we're going to get into the technique and then we'll talk about the sale. I really love um, and I follow a lot of creatives that don't just do what we do in card making. You know, they have other art forms like watercolor. And so a lot of times as a warm up, um, you will see watercolor artists paint something and they paint it over and over again. So like the most common one I think I see is leaves where it's just layers and layers of leaves to practice and they're all in different um, values. So some lighter, some darker. And I really love the way that those look. And I wanted to see if there was a way to come up with a way to use, like, if we're not freehand painters, can we use stencils to accomplish this look? And the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, you can. And so I had a hard time, like I said, narrowing down my stencils. And so I decided I was just going to go with the four seasons. So we've got a, uh, this is spring, we've got a winter, summer, fall um, also. And so this first one, I'm going to show you at regular time, and then I'll speed them up. I put down a base color. I'm using Distress Inks. You want to use an ink that is water soluble in order for this to work. So I'm using Distress Inks and then I did a base color and then I'm starting with my lightest color for my first layer and I'm just stenciling on the um, lee or on the trees as I would normally do. But then once I remove the stencil, I'm going in with a brush and a little bit of water. You don't need a ton of water. Um, just a little bit of water to move that pigment around and give it this hand painted look um, as if we just freehand painted this, even though we used a stencil. And then we're going to do this for each consecutive layer. I used four colors on every card. This one um, only has two stencils. And so I used both of the stencils, but I shifted them around my piece. Something else to note is this piece is larger than an A2 size card. This is a four and a half by six inch piece because the watercolor blocks I buy um, are, what are they, nine by 12. So that's when you trim this into four pieces, this is what you get. And then I just trim them down as needed. In this case, I die cut them. Um, but yeah, super simple, really beautiful results that look like we just sat down and spent hours watercoloring when we totally did not. Uh, so for this one, I just, they're all monochromatic. Um, this one, I just chose some greens because I've used this birch stencil and they have A2 cover plates as well. Um, I've used them, I think this is now like the fourth or fifth card that I've made that I've done a video on. So, so good. Normally I do them in blues. This time I mix it up and did it in greens. And this is honestly my favorite of all the seasons. Though I think they're all really pretty. This one, this one is <laughs> so pretty. It looks like, like a fairy forest. I don't know. I really love it. Let's talk about the sale. Honeybee, there's tons of sales going on right now. If you watched my video yesterday, you heard me mention that. It's July 4th. Um, so tons of companies are having sales and I have them um, all listed over on my craft page which is linked in the YouTube description below. But Honeybees is specifically a Christmas in July sale. So all of their Christmas and winter products are 20% off. So from this video, that's the birch trees, um, both the, I didn't use the dye, uh, but that's on sale as well. The stencils and then the snowflake stencil, the layering snowflake dyes that I used, um, those are all ones that are on sale. In addition to that, they have a clearance section of um, sets that they're retiring, which is an additional 20% off. So you could get like a six by eight stamp set for like $8. Um, and there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not going to be continue, you know, to produce them. Um, so yeah, really, really great sale. Um, also, if you have been a person who has been interested in purchasing my stamp set that I produced with the rabbit hole designs, they are also having a 20% off sale, including the Lovely Lilies um, dies and stamps. So if you had previously missed them and you wanted to pick them up, now's a great time to get them at a discount. All right, so that is the last layer for or this coming up is the last layer for this one. Uh, and I just love the way, I love the way the trees look. Um, it was really 
not a, a super time consuming process. I think each card um, took me about a half an hour. The video is so long because I made four of them. So if you take out the time that it took me to, you know, do all the die cutting and things like that, um, and just added up the the half an hour that it took to make each card, like as far as the, you know, backgrounds and the assembly, um, that's like f two hours uh, on its own. And I did it, you know, um, I did a, a lot of them. And so really, I think honestly, the most time consuming part was all of the accoutrements, <laughs> if you will. Um, I also wanted to do, because it felt very much like a fairy garden to me, like a fairy woods. You'll see in a little bit that I'm going to add some shimmer to that background, um, but I do it at the same time that I do the fall one. This one, this one is the busiest of the backgrounds, and honestly, um, if I had to do it over again, I probably would not have done four colors. I still think it's really pretty, but you guys know that I don't really love busy um, before you do your stencils, by the way, you have to make sure your backgrounds are dry. So you want to be working on a dry background. If that paper is still wet, you're just going to smush it around. Um, but I really liked this one before I kept adding the layers. So I think the second layer might be like where my favorite was, but I really like it with just one, two. And you'll see here in a second when we remove it, um, how the... Like, it's just really soft pink on this soft pink background. I think it looks beautiful. Um, but I did go in and I did the technique the same for all of them. And again, you want to be working with very minimal water. We're just trying to push this pigment around. We're not trying to completely blow out the lines. Um, though you could, that would be a totally different look. But I was trying to keep the um, items, whether they were waves or snowflakes or trees, mostly intact so that you could be able to tell what they were. And this is sped up now because obviously I wanted to show you all the backgrounds. You guys know I don't like to cut anything out, um, but it, you know, it's the same thing over and over again. For this one, since I only have one stencil, every time I put the stencil down, I just turned it a quarter turn. Um, so sometimes you'll see me messing around with the uh, placement to make sure that I'm not putting the same snowflakes on top of the old snowflakes. But this one did, and I'm not sure if it's just because it's a busier stencil in general. Um, I love it. I used it. What did I use it for? Um, oh, I did it with white on dark cardstock for my little Santa card um, over the winter and loved that. I love the stencil, but I think in layering it, because there are so many snowflakes, it did just get a little a hair busy for my taste. Um, but that's totally okay. It's all right. I just made it a little bit smaller, which is like my go-to for busy backgrounds. I make them a little bit smaller or I put some vellum on it. <laughs> like, Because if I've taken the time to make the background, I'm certainly not going to not use it. I'm going to use it. You know I'm going to use it. I'm not going to throw it away. No, I'm going to find a way to make it work for my card design. And in this case, I think it really does work in the finished card. So yeah, so that's that. We talked about the sales, talked about the technique. Um, what else have I had going on? Okay, so we're gearing up for the 4th of July. It's so weird with it being on a Tuesday, right? So you have like this weekend before and people have been popping off fireworks all the time, uh, which I just learned to accept, you know, 10 years ago when my first child was born, um, that like this is just the season where your kid is going to get constantly interrupted sleep. My husband is still working on the acceptance and he is just like the epitome of the grumpy old man. Uh, I keep waiting for him to like yell out the door to tell kids to get off his lawn because he is so mad about them. <laughs> he is so mad about the fireworks. Um, I don't love them either. And not most, not so much because they're going to wake my kids up. Like typically once my kids are asleep, like they're good. They can sleep through the fireworks like Caitlin did last night. I don't know what tonight will look like, but uh, since everybody's off again tomorrow. But Saturday night was a rough one and there was a lot. And she took a long time to fall asleep because the fireworks had started before she was out. But I don't like them because they upset my dog. Like my poor old Molly is, um, she's just an old girl and she's got a lot of anxiety, which she gets it from her mama. Yes, she do. She get it from her mama. And um, so she just paces around and it's just exhausting for her. So probably um, not so much, well, maybe tonight because there'll be a lot tonight. And tomorrow I'll just have to give her... Um, 
you know, some, some happy pills so that she can be super chill. Here, this one is done. Uh, to give this one a little bit of shimmer, I am using the Hero Arts Shimmer Spray and just spraying that on there to give it like an all over shimmer. And then the next one we're going to do is the Waves. Um, this one I think is really kind of fun. You know, we're in summer right now, so that totally, I mean, well, I am, I'm <laughs> in Ohio, we're in summer. You could be somewhere else that is not in summer. Um, but the background here, I did salvage patina, might have been a hair too light. I maybe would have gone peacock feathers if I had to do it all over again. Um, but I liked it for the stenciling portion. And um, just to, I talked about it yesterday in my video where we talked about the picket fence sale and I told you that they were having a sale on their tools um, and I thought maybe that that had included um, the stamp wheel and it does. I did double check that and um it definitely does include that. And they also sell the, um, what is that? The sticky mat. They sell this, the sticky mat. Um, and so I know that at one point the website had said that they were sold out, but Nicole, who's the owner of Picket Fence, um, did say that they were unboxing more. And so even though it said sold out, they would be adding more stock. Um, so if you're interested in picking up the sticky mat or the stamp wheel itself with its whole like stage and container, um, I, that would be the place I would get it. That's going to be your best price right now. Okay. So, uh, back to the waves technique. This again has two stencils. And so, um, for this one, because it's more abstract, instead of like shimmying the stencil to the left or the right, like I did with the trees, I actually flipped two of them upside down. And uh, this gave a really, really cool water look, which I mean, would be great for any sort of um, beach or mermaid or um, like little octopus characters. This would be a great background for any of those. Or, or here's a wild idea, um, just a sentiment, you know, just like a beachy little sentiment. That would be super cute as well. I paired mine with some seashells, the Lovely Layers seashells. Um, which I didn't really use that much last year. And so I need to make them a priority to use them because I think that they're beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, 4th of July. So yeah, so my husband's a, a grumpy old man about the, <laughs> about the fireworks. God love him. Um, but then we're hosting the 4th of July. So everybody is coming here and we've been hosting a lot more lately. Um, for two reasons. One, my mom and dad are typically the hosters. And so it is so much easier for them if somebody else hosts. And like my mom refuses to like not cook or anything because her love language is taking care of people and feeding them. Um, so she still cooks and brings it to my house, but then she doesn't have to, you know, spend all the time like cleaning her house and making sure that it's, you know, a, company presentable, which is different than a regular level of clean. I think we all know that. Here I'm using some Perfect Pearls in the Perfect Pearls and I'm just following along the um, shape of the waves to add some shimmer to my background. Um, so anyway, so we, we host to make it easier on my parents, but then it also makes it easier on us because of the baby nap time. So I'm the youngest of my siblings and I consequently I have the youngest children. And so it makes it easier if Caitlin is, first of all, at home napping because she gets way better sleep at home. Um, and then also if the party gets started before she wakes up, it's fine. She's, she's, she just parties when she gets up. You know what I'm saying? So with this one, this stencil is slightly different because the Hello Fall um, has a lot of individual leaves. Um, it's not necessarily a pattern in and of itself. So I just taped off the leaves I didn't want to use and then I'll be able to pick this up and put this down off the sticky mat to layer on any of the leaves that I do want to fill in the gaps. So I used um, a couple of yellows and oranges for this. This would be gorgeous with, you know, like some reds and some greens, like a true fall vibe. But I was really trying to stick to uh, monochromatic colors because I wasn't sure how everything was going to mix. Um, this is my second favorite background and I don't even like fall. Like that's the truth. I don't even, I don't even like it. It's not even, it's not even on my list at all. Like, no, not good. Um, 
And now everybody's like, pumpkin spice. And I'm like, no, summer or spring. Spring is just, you know, a sign of hope uh, for those of us who live in colder weather states. Um, but yeah, so we are hosting. I don't think that I told this story previously because it just didn't come up. Um, did I tell you about the grill catching on fire? So because of what my husband and I do for a living and, and um, well, what I did full time before I was a crafter full time, um, like working in public service, I know how many people set their house on fire with a grill. Like I know it's a lot. And so we had grilled out for Father's Day and then the next day was actual Father's Day. And because we had hosted, what did we host? We hosted Mother's Day, Memorial Day, my parents or my sister's birthday, Nathan's birthday. Like we were just hosting a ton of stuff. So consequently, we were grilling a lot more. And there's a grease trap underneath the grill that fills up each time that you're, um, you know, you're grilling. It, it fills up with all those things. And because we were grilling more than usual, that tray needs to be cleaned more than usual, except for when you're not a person who's used to hosting, you don't think of that. And so my wonderful husband did not think of that. So we, like I marinated some steaks because that's his favorite, um, to do some grilling for um, the actual Father's Day so he could have a meal that he wanted. And then we also did some chicken breast to like meal prep for the week. Well, Caitlin wanted to go outside with him. And so I look outside I'm inside making you know the rest of the side dishes and she's sitting at the um the table like for our patio furniture just playing with her little toys on top of the table and I look over and the grill is on fire like fire y'all tall fire tall and I was like what the hey so my husband had the grill door closed and I know what he was thinking because he knows better but you, you know how things happen like, he was thinking he needed to get Caitlin in the house. And I was like, you have to close the door, you know, because you're just feeding it with all of that oxygen. So I'm like, close the door. So he does. He grabs Caitlin. He hands her to me. She starts crying because she wants to be outside. He's just trying to put the fire out. So, um, oh, here's all four of the backgrounds. So these are all four of them completed. I did not, I think I cut this part out or I didn't video it. I'm not sure. But I actually cut all of these out, um with the uh, stitching dies that Honeybee has. So the rectangles and the squares. This is all the extras that I used, which was the layering, um, seashells, the monstera leaf, the um, fall, I think it's a fall bouquet, the layering snowflakes, and spring greenery. Spring greenery is not on sale right now, but the winter greenery is, and it's just as good. PPS. This is me very quickly doing some watercoloring so that I can die cut them for um, the things I need to complete the card. Um, but so anyway, so he hands her to me inside the house and he was like, I think your sister said, you know, because for a grease fire, you can't put water on it. Water makes it worse. You have to put dry things on it. And he was like baking soda. And I was like, we don't have any baking soda. I was like, I have flour. Here is what I did not know. This is my own doing. Um, flour is actually combustible. I didn't know that. So we're like dumping flour on it, but it's not helping. And now in hindsight, knowing that information, now I know why it was not helping. This is the one I'm very lightly doing some pinks and orange and yellows. And then I'm adding some gold perfect pearls to it. This is what I'm going to cut my seashell out of. Um... So, like, the fire is just getting worse. And, like, at one point, like, Eric's looking at the fire. I'm looking at Eric. I realize the flower bag in his hand is also on fire. <laughs> so he then realizes it, and he just, like, throws it onto the grill. And I was like, do you just want the fire extinguisher? And he was like, yes. So if you don't have a fire extinguisher in your home, we actually have two. Um, you you need to have one. They're, they're must-haves for things like this. So it doesn't get out of control. And so he grabs the fire extinguisher from underneath the uh, kitchen sink and then puts it out. And he's like, we're not going to be able to eat anything off this. And I was like, dude, it's fine. It's totally fine. I was like, so he was really mad at himself because he's like, I should clean the grease trap. And I was like, dude, like things happen. Like nothing, no, nothing was lost. that can't be replaced. Right. So it's cool. And then I told him, plus it happened on like the best day of the year. It's Father's Day. Every grill in the egg like in the u.s is on sale right now like 
seriously, every single one of them. So we did end up finding a very good deal on a new grill and purchasing that. Um, so we only were out without a grill for about a week, um, which for us, because we are hosting so much, is, is uh, kind of like, you know, something we have to have. Um, but anyway, so in doing that, I told him, like, thank thankfully it was you and not me I said because I've never had to use a fire extinguisher and I would have had to read the directions and he was like what it's so foreign to him because he uses them so often at work that it's like a foreign concept that nobody would know how to use a fire extinguisher but I don't because I've never had to use one thank god um, and so then the next night when Peanut was home, he asked Nathan, uh, do you know how to use a fire extinguisher? And Nathan was like, no, I've never had to use one. So because my husband is brilliant, um, he, and he just, he was like, listen, tonight after dinner, we're going to start a small fire. Uh, and then you and Nathan are going to practice putting it out because we've already used this fire extinguisher and you can have them refilled or you can just purchase a new one. He was like, but there's still plenty of stuff in here to use it. So that way we can just walk you through the steps. And then if something ever happens, like, you know how to use it. So we did. And um, Nathan thought it was super fun. I was a little bit more apprehensive, but it was very easy to use. Um, but like just making sure that everybody in your house knows how to use it. Um, honestly did not even occur to me and so I thought it was a really great idea it was a really smart parenting move on his part to make sure that everybody knew what they were doing um so yeah here's here's hoping no more grill <laughs> no more grill fires because it was large um he did oh by the way I didn't even say that before I looked out the window and saw it he had already removed the propane so there was nothing feeding the fire he had already taken it off um, so yeah, again, something that I don't know that in the heat of the moment, I probably would have thought of heat of the moment. That was punny, but I didn't mean for it to be, <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be. All right. So this, um, background was cut with the largest, uh, rectangle, I believe in the stitching rectangles. And then I'm using some watercolored leaves uh, that were cut with the spring greenery and some gold as well to match that gold splatter that we added. And unfortunately, I did need a condolence card. If any of you guys watch my channel um, or have seen my lives, um, Linda, who, uh, Linda Gorman, she is a longtime follower of mine and she actually lives near me and I've been blessed enough to meet her in real life. She does a lot with Ohio stamp junkies. She's just a really wonderful crafter. Um, unfortunately she lost her daughter earlier in the week. And, um, so I wanted to have something to send to her to let her know I was thinking of her. And if you are in the camp of the praying type, if you could include Linda in your prayers, um, you know, just for, you know, the Lord to wrap his arms around her and give her some comfort during this, this difficult time. She, I have been including her in my prayers all week long because I cannot imagine, uh, what she is, she is going through. So, um, so that one even though it didn't, I mean, it could have been any kind of card. I needed a condolence card. And so that's why I chose to go that way. This one, um, fall, I don't know if it's because like of Thanksgiving. Um, but for me, fall cards are just like scream, um, like gratefulness and thankfulness. And so it really wasn't a large jump for me to reach out for that thank you sentiment. Um, and then this background was also cut with one of the um, stitched rectangle dies. So I think this, the uh, snowflake one, honestly, was the only one I used the square for. All the rest were done with the rectangles. And then I cut out these little bitty, uh, well, they're not that little bitty, but they're smaller, um, fall leaves. And I did gold and then I did the orange and yellow watercolor. Uh, and I actually, normally I only create like two little bouquets on my cards. Um, but this one I actually did three because of the way that it was laid out. It just looked a little barren down there in the bottom left. So um, I put a couple underneath the, uh, the bottom loop for the Y as well. And I did like that much better. Also, I let all of these overhang like overhang their little white border 
Um, I think that these would look really pretty with colored backgrounds as well, but I don't like the busy. And we've already discussed that. Um, I don't love the busy, so I just kept it nice and simple. I used the autumn pearls for this, for that one, and for the, um, oh, for the tree card, I used the Make It Merry, um, gems, and those are also on sale because they're considered a Christmas item. So for these ones, um, this is probably my least favorite card, honestly. I'm just being honest. I think that we can all have cards that we like but don't love, um, or at least I try to be honest about that. So I put together all of my die cuts. It did not feel very dimensional to me, um, and so I did go in with a Copic marker and just add a little bit of shadow on the layers, and that kind of helped it um, a little bit. But this one, I think... I, I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure why I don't like it. I was actually, I showed it to Dawn and she was like, no girl, I like it. Um, I'm not sure what it is about it that bothers me, but there is something. I just don't know what it is. This one I chose to pop up instead of glue flat, um, just so that the little pieces, parts that were overhanging had some like shadow underneath them. And for that, I did use the Picket Fence um, extra wide foam tape put a little liquid glue on the back of that so that it gives me a little bit of time to, you know, work with how it needs to be laid down. And then, um, aren't these Monstera leaves great? I really need to do more with those. Um, but so I die cut those out of watercolor paper and then I did the, like the seagrass out of gold, um, because I had the gold shimmers in my seashell and, um, that was, that was really it. This is the, the only one I used the bitty buds, buzz words for. Why is that so hard to say? Bitty buzz words. It's the only one that I used that for, but those are an excellent um, set. Uh, anything, like I think everybody should have in their stash, like just a really good large sentiment set. Um, because sometimes those are the only way to finish off a card, honestly. Like, especially if you do like a lot of techniques or backgrounds, um, sometimes you don't want to cover up all of the beautiful background work that you have done. Um, and so sometimes finishing it with a sentiment and maybe a few little gems or pearls, rhinestones, um, is the, is the only way you can really finish it off. That's just my personal opinion. Everybody might not feel that way, but I think a, a large sentiment set is a must have tool. Um, so here I've just built my little area and then this is die cuts stacked on die cuts stacked on die cuts. And so there was no way for my sentiment to lay flush. So I ended up having to put some foam tape kind of on the left and right hand sides so that the um, seashell and the grasses would fit right in between. And that is, I'm going to put glue there so that it does adhere down, but that is going to help it so that everything does sit flush. Um, the foam tape was necessary. And then it's the same thing for this little guy, um, my little sub sentiment here. I had to put some foam on the right hand side and then glue it on the left. The um, gems that I used for this one are the, I can't remember if it's Bee Bliss or Rainbow Birthday, but it's one or the other. I think that it is the Bee Bliss. I used the light blue ones, um, but they both have really pretty light blues in them. So either would work, honestly. Um, so I just put those down and then that finishes off this one. And then the snowflake one, save the best for last. I don't know. I think it did come out cute. It's just different. So this is the one, like I said, that I used this stitching square for because this background was just so busy. Now I could obviously use the rest of the background on a different card, just, you know, like as a slightly smaller panel. Um, but it just seemed to be that a lot was happening here with all of the snowflakes being layered. And I think when you look at it, you can see that it is snowflakes. You know, when you look at the background, that it's, you know, snowflakes falling and it's multiple layers of snowflakes. Um, it's just a little bit more happening than what I would usually like. For the, um, and this is not the first time I've used these layering snowflakes either. These are great. Um, I cut some out of glitter paper, white glitter paper, and then I cut others out of the, you know, watercolored paper. In order to make them look fuller, I did cut some of them in half and tuck the halves underneath my popped up square. Um, 
And then I added so many gemstones. I have no regrets. I have no regrets over that. If there was a full snowflake that I could add a gemstone to the middle of, then I did. And what did I use for those? That one is the Bee Bliss because it has that really pretty light pink in it. Um, but yeah, so you could do this. This would look great in blues. Um, this would look great in blues and purples, like a, a blue-violet combination. I just was trying to do something different than the blues because I had that summer card going on. So I opted for pinks and purples. Um, but I'm here for it, honestly. I think, that, I think the combination is really pretty. Plus that um, Hero Art Shimmer Spray has um, kind of like a pink shimmer. So it really fits in pretty perfectly, honestly. Um, so yeah, so that's that. I do have another idea for the stencils with watercolor and kind of like layering the colors. Um, that's slightly different than this. If you guys are interested in seeing that, please let me know. Um, so that way I could start working on that video. And then these are, these are all the cards. So we have winter, fall, um, spring and summer. I think that they came out super cute. Please let me know which one is your favorite. I'd be very interested to know which one you like. Thank you guys so much for sticking around here. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.